And ladies and gentlemen, if you're finding me and Larry for the first time, please subscribe to this channel. Be sure to subscribe to Larry's channel. Check us out. We are a different breed. This brother right here was in the news this week, Larry. Uh oh. <laughs> hey, it's a good uh -oh. thing though. It ain't it ain't a bad thing. It's a good thing. He okay. was in the news and he flexed his muscle. So let me read to you what happened. So y'all know Dave Chappelle um, had the Chappelle Show on Comedy Central, which is owned by Viacom CBS, right? Chappelle Show. He signed Chappelle the contract show. and then he walked away and they had the rights to his show. Well, little did we know, they took those rights and they was kind of con subleasing them out to other people. That's how Netflix got it, all right? So what did Dave Chappelle do? Dave Chappelle was frustrated because they didn't break him any extra bread for subleasing to Netflix. So Dave Chappelle got on his Instagram yesterday and basically told fans to not watch his show until he get his coins. And because of the outstanding relationship that Netflix has with Dave Chappelle, you know what Netflix did, Larry? They pulled it. They pulled it. And the reason why they pulled it is because they have such a great working relationship with Dave Chappelle. He's doing stand up. And when they pulled it for him, you know, him and Netflix dropped a statement saying that there's con there's continuity with the two. They love Dave. Dave loves them for being a disruptor. Larry, how do you feel about Dave Chappelle coming out telling fans to first strike and then flexing his muscle with his new partner, Netflix? to get the thing removed until somebody give him some extra money. Um, I'll be honest with you, man. I have mixed feelings about it. I kind of do too, because he was on the contract, uh, but, but, I, but I mean, I get it because you had these, you had these, a lot of these, these big media conglomerates that are out there and they're taking advantage of these artists they are. and they, are. and they have been for decades and, and they still do. And it's shameful when that happens. But at the same time, Comedy Central and then made Dave made Dave Chappelle a very, very, very rich man with those contracts. They were not bit if they, they were they were they were very lopsided. I'm not gonna say they were one-sided because it's not like Dave Chappelle left there and didn't have any money. He did. And when he when he left his contract with them, they were offering him even more money, but it was a very lopsided deal, and I get where I get where he's upset that he's not going to get anything. I can't believe that he does, that he's not getting any sort of um, residuals off of that show. That's just crazy. He must this contract must have been worse than TLC's or something. I mean, that's just well, crazy. Well, I remember but, the, I remember the contract like it was yesterday before Dave Chappelle flipped out and went to Africa butt naked. They paid the man fifty million dollars. Now have and all that was upfront money. Having said that, even though, you know, we have this whole we should honor contracts and all that, I look at what Dave Chappelle did. No different, Larry, from what NFL players do. Owners in the NFL oftentimes come to a player who they've overpaid and ask them to renegotiate their contracts if they're not right. living up to what those owners want. OK. And when Viacom starts subleasing the Dave Chappelle show to all these networks. Here's another one that made Dave Chappelle mad. He talked about it. They also subleased it to HBO. And you know, well, they, why, they licensed it. It's licensed it, was, HBO. it was a licensing deal. Yeah. They made Dave Chappelle upset because Larry, when Dave Chappelle came up with the Dave Chappelle show, guess who was the first people he went to? Yeah. HBO. And they shut him down and said, no, they said no. Yeah. And so I kind of look at this, kind of like okay if you have a partner and that partner didn't know that you felt salty about an old deal and that new partner is looking at okay we're making great headway with dave chappelle and yeah. dave chappelle has the pull to say look they didn't pay me y'all can pay me if you want to but if not pull it i ain't got no problem with that because what can viacom do so Viacom exercised their contract to do what they legally could do, which is put it anywhere they want to. And Dave Chappelle exercised his right to say fans boycott it. But not only did him telling fans to boycott it got an action done, it also got it removed by his new partner, which is Netflix. So I'm perfectly comfortable with it. All right, here's here's a couple here's a couple things that I think are a little bit 
a little janky on everyone's side. One, I understand. I understand the emotional reaction he ha he has about not wanting his content on HBO after HBO shut him down and didn't give him the deal. I get I get his feelings on that. Right. And part of me as a as a fan of the show would like to say I probably would have loved to have seen that show on HBO because as as it's not it's still going to be on, as, it was, as edgy as that show was yeah. on Comedy Central. If uh -huh. that show was on HBO, my God, the the the. He may have kept going all the boundaries and all the lines he could have pushed through that he that he had to sort of pull back on because it was on regular cable and not on, you know, premium cable like HBO. Mm -hmm. HBO, he probably would have had a lot more freedom. Well, let me but, say this. Let me say this before you go on, because this, uh -huh. is, this is a very important point. Before he dropped this thing on Instagram last night, mm -hmm. he talked with Netflix about doing a new Dave Chappelle show, which they're going to give him free range to do, but he won't be able to call it the Chappelle show. So mm. when you have a partner who's not only saying, okay, Dave, we don't, we're not going to pay you, but we will let you have another show that you can do with us. I got no bones with it. Yeah. Now here's, here's another issue that I have with, here's another issue that I have with this is that Netflix, they are his current partner. Mm -hmm. It still seems a little shady that they made that licensing deal and put the show out there, and then Dave Chappelle had to come back and say, "Hey," because he apparently he went directly to the programming people and and asked them not to put the show on after they had already put it on. And I guess, but my thought is, is this: if you if this is one if this is one of your premier content producers, one of the top people that you're working with. Mm -hmm. Why would you not go to him first and say, "Hey, we're about to make a licensing deal for your for the old Chappelle show, and we just want you to know"? Why That's would you not do? Like, if I'm the VP of uh, if I'm the VP of uh, 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 programming or acquisitions, and and I didn't reach out to Chappelle's people and say, "Hey, we're about to license your old show. I just want to give you a heads up and see what the response is." I'm thinking to myself, I'm I'm. I'm not acting responsibly to to my corporation because because you have to assume that there might be some feelings behind there and I'm pretty I'm pretty much at this point I can pretty much guarantee that that Netflix wasted probably, you know, 8 10 million dollars by licensing that show and now they can't air it. You well, know? I feel like this, the fact that they're going to let him do his own new show with a new name shows that if they made the mistake that you just mentioned, it shows that they're trying to show him good faith that they want to ride this marriage of him and comedy and his genius of comedy together. So and maybe but, that was part of the plan. Maybe they figured, okay, we'll license the show. We'll put it out there. And if he comes and says anything about it, then we'll just say, we'll pull it, but we would rather have you do it. than not just pull it. We want to still give the fans a Chappelle show. So how about we, how about we make a deal for a new show? Maybe that was exactly. all part of their plan. I don't know. It could have been. But, it could have been. But now here's the other problem that I have with this, right? Okay. Is that these companies, as, as janky as some of these contracts are, these media companies put up a crap ton of money to make sure that these artists can produce content the way they want to produce it. With the And I say the way they want to produce it. I'm talking about with the production values, with the marketing, with the distribution that they need so these shows can be uh, can be successful. Mm -hmm. And these shows, and so when you have, when you have a, you know, a a, um, a company putting up all this money, because when you like, when I, I went to school for for film, you know, I went and got a master's in in film and video production, and one thing that we learned is is when you're doing a a TV program, a TV show, and I'm talking about like an episodic TV show, those shows cost anywhere between like two and four million dollars an episode it's like a movie budget it's like a small movie budget for each and every episode and mm -hmm. so if you're talking about filming if you're talking about filming 12 episodes of the dave chappelle show and you know and it's going to cost you so let's say three million dollars an episode that's 36 million dollars just in production costs and now you still have to probably spend you know, the same or twice that on marketing, 
you know, and, and making sure that you have your, your product and all these in not just in marketing, but you have to make sure you actually have your product out there in different markets. So hopefully they were able to get some licensing deals for that. But it's expensive to produce a television show. And that's one of the reasons why these companies will say, OK, yeah, we're going to put up the money up front. You're going to get paid a lot of money, but we're also going to own the rights to this show because we're paying for it. And so when so we're going to be able to then to turn around and we're going to be able to license this show to to, you know, to to see to the CW channel or to Netflix or to HBO Max or some other network in Norway or Japan or wherever else. And we're going to put the show in syndication after a certain amount of episodes. And that's how they make that's how most television programs make their money. Most television programs don't make enough money just on advertisement alone to justify the cost of the show. Most of them make their money in the ancillary markets like syndication, like DVDs, like video on demand, all that stuff. So mm -hmm. it's sort of I, I understand how he feels not getting his not feeling like, well, I'm not getting any more money out of it. But at the same time, the company put up all that money to, up front so he can produce the show. And he wouldn't be in the position that he's in now if they didn't do that. If he, if that if they didn't put up the money for that show, so that show can be a success, he would not be as big as he is now. So I think it's a bit unfair to tell these companies now, no, you can't benefit off the contracts that I signed, even though I signed them. Well, I'm, I'm not really cool with that. And I honestly, I just think moving forward, what he should do is just sign better contracts. Well, well even if he did sign... Let's just say he did sign the contract and because I've been in this situation before and I've actually flexed my muscle in the same way Dave Chappelle did. You sign a contract that takes you from broke to you got some money. But what you don't know that the corporation knows they're banking on whatever they're paying you. They are probably going to get four times that amount. I'm, I, I can see with Dave Chappelle because I went back to the negotiating table with the people I did my contract with. And I said, look, this thing went way better than what y'all thought. Y'all paying me X, Y, Z, Z rows, but y'all getting three extra Z rows that I ain't getting. I would like to renegotiate this contract. You know what they told me, Larry? They said H to the no, get out of our office. I said, okay, you don't want to renegotiate. Not only will I leave, you don't have a no compete clause. And I will tell people, the reason I left was because you didn't want to renegotiate my contract. Within a week, they called me back and said, let's renegotiate. And I said, nope, I done seen how much y'all making off of me. Y'all giving me table scraps up front. I didn't know that this much money was coming on the back end. Y'all, unless y'all going to give me every penny of this, I'm going. I'm starting my own company. And there's nothing you can do about it. All day, Chappelle said was, Viacom, give me some more money. Or I'm going to tell Netflix not to have fans watch it, which he's in his right to do. If anything, if Viacom wants to be upset, they should be upset with Netflix, shouldn't they? How can you get mad with well, Dave Chappelle? I don't, I, don't, I don't know if he has the right to tell fans not to watch it because I don't know what kind of I don't know what kind of clauses are in that contract. Sometimes they there are clauses in those contracts where the artists are not allowed to tell people not to watch. And there so, have been but don't you think don't nervous. you think don't you think that if that was the case, he would not have said it or we will soon see some lawsuits coming his way from Viacom? I don't know, because here's the thing. There are certain times where people will say we're going to let this go because we have hopes of being able to work with him again one day. Exactly. Or we have hopes of being able to, to, to use exactly. his content and, you right. know, his future content and, you know, one day. So we don't want to. So we don't want to poison the well, so we're just going to let that go. Right. But at the same time, it's un I, I sincerely believe it's unfair to expect these media companies to put up all this money. And, and, this, is, and this is the thing that gets me, is that people, people get really mad at these companies. These guys make so much money, and they don't pay the artist anything, and the artists are getting screwed, and blah, blah, blah. And sometimes that is absolutely true. Some of these artists are truly getting screwed over with bad contracts. But at the same time, you have to allow people who are putting money up front to profit off of the off the work that they are financing, because if they can't, they simply won't do it. If there's no financial incentive for companies to to, you know, 
to pay for comedians to make their shows or for rappers to make their albums or for singers to make their albums or go on concert tours. If there's no money in for it from the companies, they just simply won't finance it. And then you won't have the great art. You won't have that stuff to enjoy because the people just won't have the means to put it out. Or maybe they'll make the great art, but you'll never hear about it because they won't have the money to market it and it just won't get out there. So, mm. I mean, it's, you, you have to, it's, I mean, it's just, it's like one of those things, like if, if I pay a great architect to come and build me a hotel and, and he comes and he builds the hotel and I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be a hotel. It's going to be great because people will be able to sleep here and it's in a, and it's in a prime location. Well, if it turns out that the location happens to be the least of the reasons why people come, everybody comes because the architecture is so beautiful. It's so revolutionary that no one has seen anything like it before. And that's why people are coming. Well, that architect can't come back to me after the, after the, he realizes why people are coming and saying, hey, my hotel is so beautiful that I designed that you should pay me more money. They have to tell him, no, it's not your hotel. It's my hotel. I paid you to do a job and you did it excellent and I appreciate it. But what you should do is just simply say, I'm going to use this as a marketing tool to pay so that when the next person who goes to hire me is not going to end up paying me a million dollars, they're going to have to pay me $12 million. That's what you should take that as, but you don't, you shouldn't sit around and say, get on Insta on, on, on social media and tell people don't stay at this hotel. I designed this. What you're going to see is my art, my beauty, my design, and he's not paying me more money. So you shouldn't use it. What you should just say is, okay, maybe I undervalued my work. Maybe I undervalued myself. And now I've learned that lesson and I'm moving on. Man, the hell on that. I, I disagree with you on that one. If my work was undervalued and I went back to you to say, hey, pay me my coins and let's let bygones be bygones. Maybe we can have a relationship together. And you say no. Only thing I can do is say, Look, you know what? I'm just going to tell my fans not to watch. And you can't stop him from doing that. Simple as that.